Let's go blasting lots of demons. Because it's the Emperor's way. Let's blow up the traitor legions and give them hell to pay. The warps perverted lots of minds, harmonizing with the chaos chord. Eviscerate their corrupt behinds with the gnashing teeth of my chain sword. Everyone has been talking about Warhammer 40k bolt gun the last few months. Every YouTuber has reviewed it, and I am no different. I don't think this is going to be a long one, as I don't have a new, different or interesting take to spin on this one. The question is simply, is it worth it? Is the hype justified? At $30 Australian, yes, absolutely. If you see it on special, snap it up immediately. For 30 dollar dos and under, this game is well worth it. It isn't very long. I finished it in just under 15 hours, so I wouldn't pay more than $30 just by virtue of its brevity. Since this game's been so successful, I would expect it to receive DLC, updates or expansions, so it's likely the value for money on this one's only going to get better with time. The people who made this game know their target market. They know them so well they could have carved them from marble with a peacock feather. Doom meets Warhammer 40,000. Two concepts that emerged from that same late 80s, early 90s soup. Both over the top, hyper violent, heavy metal and grungy, explosions and spikes and demons and blood. They are so tantalising in their closeness that a great crossover comes as no surprise. The cynic in me expects something that has so much obvious potential to always be a giant letdown. The hype isn't just real because of marketing, the hype is real because anyone who is familiar with the two concepts can immediately see the potential. And then when I did see the screenshots and footage, I was blown away. It looked right. It had the pizzazz and the details and the art direction and the care that says, I get it, I know what I'm doing. I am not an expert at the boomer shooter genre. I was there, but I was a little kid, not a teen or a young adult. I played my share of Duke Nukem 3D and Wolfenstein. My dad wouldn't let me play Doom because it was too violent, which I think is funny because Duke 3D has all sorts of its own inappropriate content. Later I played Quake titles and Unreal Tournament, and through that era I was probably spending more hours of my life on video games than I ever will again. I have been aware of the boomer shooter revival of more recent years, but have played very few of them. I enjoy shooters, but modern me tends to go for strategy, RPG, building, survival titles, and the genre my heart and teenage years really belong to is the immersive sim, Deus Ex Forever. So, the boomer shooter revival hasn't really been on my menu until now. The reason this one convinced me was because it looked precision engineered to be that game that was talked about in the playground by the sticky snotty kid that got to watch R movies with their seven half siblings. Little Snotface would claim that he played a Warhammer shooter like Doom that his dad had brought home in a floppy because he worked for Games Workshop. This game is exactly what I was imagining the lying little snothead was bragging about at the recess handball court in 1996. It's like a glimpse into a trouser leg of time we never went down, and in my book that alone makes it art. I say 1996 and not 1992 because while the advertising pitch for this game is Doom meets Warhammer 40k, to me it plays like Quake meets Warhammer 40k. Not to say that Bolt Gun is a direct clone of any particular original boomer shooter. It's a distillation of the old school genre's conventions and some more modern design as well. Which is exactly what I want. There was plenty that was fun about old school shooters and plenty that was dumb and frustrating. And Bolt Gun nails the balance. 
It preserves enough of the old school ways to get the same thrill from them. But there's a bit less slamming your head into a glass pane because you've been lost in a maze of the same four repeating textures for an hour and you don't know that you've soft locked yourself into a permanent lose state yet because you picked up the brown key card and went through the brown door that closed behind you before you picked up the blue key card and the blue doors on the other side of the now closed brown door anyway. Not being a boomer shooter expert, I can't officially endorse this, but this game would count as entry level into the genre, I'm sure. I think any big boomer shooter experts or fans out there might find this game a little too easy, a little too accessible, with nothing especially fancy or different or new. And while the game is very competent, I suspect for people who love the genre, the levels and the weapons and the enemy varieties and bosses may be fairly pedestrian. On the other hand, for people who just play like good games and maybe aren't all that interested in boomer shooters or Warhammer 40k, this game also doesn't offer them very much. I think for that theoretical gamer, they'll get 15 hours of fun out of this provided they don't dislike shooters in their conventions. I could certainly see someone of this ilk enjoying the gunplay and art style, but not really being able to remain engaged by the old school level based design with scores at the end of each one or really getting the setting and what's going on fortunately you me and the good people at all rock digital know that there is a large enough market of people in the middle who are going to find the conventions of the boomer shooter throwback a thrilling novelty and a retro pixel art 40k coat of paint an irresistible hook that's certainly how it was for me my inner nine-year-old rubbed their eyes in disbelief to summarise, for a boomer shooter veteran, it's probably kind of neat but brain dead and lacking in challenge. And for the layman, it's too niche requiring, requiring you to already love two nerdy things running into each other. If you were there and you love those nerdy things, this game gets it. It's not just the beautiful gory pixel art you can see. The music is spot on, from the classic heavy metal on the title screens to the eerie moody synths and pumping retro drum machines, every choice in regard to the music is moody perfection. The sounds are great too, the guns, the monsters, you name it, they sound both like a retro game and sell what they are and what they are doing. The titular bolt gun is emblematic of this. When it goes boom and a bloke explodes into gore in this game, you feel like you are the action hero pulling the trigger in an 80s Paul Verhoeven flick. That kind of feeling is what this game is about. And really, everything is in service of it. The game wants you to feel a certain kind of way and prioritises that over everything else. Warhammer 40k is a feeling more than it is a consistent set of law conventions and rules. Boomer shooters are about a feeling more than some tropes and design principles. That's why they can change and develop year in and year out and somehow remain the same. Bolt Gun knows it is a boomer shooter before it is a 40k game. It's both but it knows which one is more important in order to pull off the trick it is aiming for. It wants to sell you the power fantasy of being a space marine. It doesn't want to accurately simulate or depict being a space marine. To give you that feeling, it uses the exciting and fun mechanics of boomer shooters. For example, your movement speed is ridiculous. Very common in boomer shooters, but even for the Emperor's finest super soldiers, it is ridiculous. Nor can a law accurate space marine accelerate or decelerate midair at will, or abruptly change direction in midair at will and string these things together into bloody chain sword slaughter. I mean, they are quite capable of performing elaborate chain sword slaughter ballets in the law. It's just that they don't ping around in space defying physics like they were the dot at the end of a laser pointer wielded by a four-year-old who's had too much sugar while they do it. Well, not at least without some attempt at justifying in the narrative with technology like a jump pack or anti-grav watsits or something. Some of the official art depicting your space marine wearing a jump pack 
So, I kind of thought he was wearing one the whole time, but then later in the game you run into giant floating jump pack icons in specific spots that launch you over specific gaps and kind of act as jump pads. So that says to me your character only wears them to do specific jumps. That's another thing the Boomer Shooter conventions. Don't just trump the Warhammer ones for movement, but also for items. The levels are littered with floating, spinning item pickups, med packs and vials and ammo and so forth. No surprise to anyone who's ever played this kind of shooter before, but running over a giant floating white box with a red cross on it at a thousand kilometers an hour and instantly having all of your grievous bodily wounds healed isn't something that tends to happen in Warhammer 40k. The setting isn't realistic, but in order to be grim and all dark, such miraculous technology as instant magical healing boxes aren't very present. Not to mention the fact that your one Space Marine character can carry nine or so huge weapons and all of their ammo simultaneously and instantly switch between them and operate them while flying through the air and changing direction abruptly at a million kilometers an hour with no recoil and pinpoint accuracy and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Space Marines are great, but they can't do that either. Usually they carry one main weapon at a time and you have squads of them to get the tactical variety of weapons and so on. The game isn't preoccupied with delivering the Space Marine experience. It wants to give you the Boomer Shooter experience. By doing so, it gives you the Space Marine feeling. And I think it might do it better than I think a simulation experience could. Sure. No Space Marine can bunny hop at 200 kilometers an hour up a cliff shooting a plasma gun only to instantly change direction at the top as if momentum didn't exist and chainsaw a demon in half before landing just to bunny hop backwards down a corridor firing a heavy bolter all in the space of 6 seconds. But when you're doing so in this game, it still feels like how a Space Marine must feel in the heat of battle, even if all they would be doing in the equivalent six seconds is chainsawing a dude while shooting their bolt pistol. Once you add the music and the sound and the quality pixel art, this kind of gameplay experience adds up to all of the good feelings that make Warhammer 40,000 that thing that I love, and all of the good feelings that made that era of gaming I grew up with so enjoyable. A powerful double whammy. Even on a lore level, the idea that one Space Marine could achieve what the Space Marine and Bolt Gun does by themselves is ridiculous for all but the very most special of special Space Marines. Which, granted I guess, the Ultramarine on the cover art definitely is one of those super special Space Marines now. Generally, while Space Marines are represented as absolute beasts compared to regular people, They are also not represented as completely broken in their setting, as they require the setting to feel dangerous enough to justify the Space Marines and make it dramatic. The Space Marines are ridiculous, but so are the threats they fight, which are capable of killing them. If every Space Marine could perform like a boomer shooter protagonist, they'd take more losses from people pinging off cliffs and into walls at speed than from enemies. Although. One of Bolt Gun's concessions to non-frustrating modernity is that falls don't kill you, but simply respawn you back on the edge of the nearest platform, as if it had never happened. You get teleported back to the top of a fall with a little fade into black, then fade out. Phew! That was embarrassing. Keep shooting, mate, vibe. It's good for a casual like me, who are just looking for some fun, but I can see a certain crowd modding proper fall deaths back in. To me, it's just more evidence that this game's direction is all about that feeling. For the devs, that fall death would have impeded that feeling, and it just becomes another unnecessary obstacle between you and the feeling of power and exhilaration a space marine must feel doing their thing, even if the thing you are doing to feel that way is a little more preposterous and requires a bit more suspension of disbelief. This isn't a problem, in fact it might even be a strength. Put it like this, 
you could get an understanding of The Lord of the Rings by reading The Silmarillion. Or you could get an understanding by listening to some of the Led Zeppelin songs inspired by The Lord of the Rings, like, say, Ramble On. They're very different choices, very different vibes. They are not at all equal choices. For Warhammer 40k, Bulk Gun is like listening to Led Zeppelin, while reading the Black Library novels on the Horus Heresy is like reading the Silmarillion. When it comes to fun video games and 40k, I'm looking for that Led Zeppelin experience, with indulgences and liberties and shortcomings. They are all welcome so long as it feels right. And in fact, the flaws will feel right too. That's if you nail it. Bolt Gun embodies this. The devs get it. I say congratulations. This is the most interesting and impressive thing about this game. It means that the game is an absolute blast for 15 hours and then it's done. The equivalent of a few indulgent guitar solos, a drum breakdown, and a whole lot of wailing done for the love of it. And it does the heart good to see it done well. I have heard comparisons of Bolt Gun to Dawn of War. In my view, they both share this understanding that the vibe is the most important part of pulling off a 40k game, and that your actual game can do, well, whatever works for it and makes it engrossing. So long as you nail that 40k vibe, 40k isn't something you simulate. There isn't a definitive representation of the reality of that setting. At least, not in terms of making your video game. You make your game however you want. There's no reason 40k won't work with it. It's 40k's job. 40k is a platform for games. In Dawn of War and Bolt Gun, I see projects where that knowledge is liberating for the developers. They know they can make a damn good RTS or boomer shooter and nail all the engrossing conventions that make it fun, so long as they hit full send and commit to the packaging and wrapping every little detail in that glorious 40k vibe. These games are peers in that respect. And while not every property out there thrives with this formula, I find 40k most certainly does and is always at its best when it is approached this way. I do have some minor criticisms for the game. Possibly the only thing that I found truly frustrating was how invisible cultists are. They are basically just dudes with a variety of guns. They are your standard enemy mook. You one-shot them in this game. I think I've heard a few other critics out there point this one out too, but their silhouette just doesn't pop from the background textures enough, and sometimes they are all but invisible. A cunning advantage for a relatively weak opponent maybe, but you can't help but feel cheated when you stop on low health in an empty room only to find there was a plasma gun wielding cultist just standing out in the open the whole time. They just don't feel intentionally stealthy, just accidentally difficult to read. I also admit with struggling with the bosses at first, but eventually how you play these games clicked with me again, and by the end of the game I found them challenging but surmountable. I played on hard difficulty, by the way, which I found to be dangerous enough to make death easy enough to come by, but the combat's still breathtakingly exciting. Another criticism I have is for a game that looks so retro it is beefy enough under the hood that sometimes I ran into lag and FPS slowdown. Most of the time it was fine, but occasionally, occasionally I'd hit a serious patch of frame drops, and you've probably seen some in my footage. My PC is by no means an ultra-modern beast, but it is an aging junior beast, so I guess this game at 5 gigabytes big and causing me a bit of FPS slowdown is clocking in on the bulky, unoptimized end of Boomer Shooter Revival games. I reckon there are other Boomer Shooter Revival games out there chasing small file sizes and high performance on almost any platform, but Bulk Gun, so dripping in beautiful assets and sound files on such magnificent presentation, I'm glad they went this way. 
just watch out. It might not be the lightweight laptop game. It could appear to be based on the graphics. I'm sure it absolutely slays on something like a Steam Deck. The final criticism is sometimes I got pretty lost, but it's not even really a criticism. It's just the nature of boomer shooters and their labyrinthine-like levels. The fact I only got stuck a couple of times and only once needed to look up help because I was completely misunderstanding an obvious design cue pointing me to an exit. Well, it speaks volumes about how hard the devs have worked to try and curb the genre's tendency to get you traumatically stuck in an endless repeating maze of samey looking tiles. I very much enjoyed how this game was packaged as just a single clean install that boots up to a simple but vibrant menu that's responsive and fast. There aren't excessive game modes or any unnecessary trimming in this respect. It feels like an old school game. Buy it, install it, play it. No fuss, no muss, no launcher with built-in store and multiplayer platform, no awkward promises of a nebula of DLC content, no in-game store, just play the game, check chapter select, save and load options, credits and quit. This is how you do it classy in 2023. I also very much enjoyed the old school levels. This isn't a Half-Life-esque uninterrupted narrative situation. You get your time and your kills when you press the end the level button. You do a bunch of levels before you see a cutscene. These cutscenes are gorgeous, and if you love pixel art, they are absolutely breathtaking, but they are short, and they exist just to give you enough context to enjoy the game. In every way, this game is about booting it up and shooting demons, with as little time or obstruction between you wanting to play it and you playing it as possible. The level structure helps with this fast release energy approach, so it lets you know you are going in for small bites at a time. I'm a busy guy. I work a lot and all sorts of hours. A game I know I can just boot for 15 minutes or half an hour and have a blast and expect to maybe bash out a level on is very welcome. It's not a game I feel like you sit down in one big set sitting and bash through. It doesn't have super long-term attention span goals, although I'm sure plenty of people did it that way. It's a rock and Led Zeppelin song, not a dense novel. You play it for a bit just to feel exhilarated. You don't settle down for a marathon to concentrate and learn. So I appreciate the short level format. Also approve big time of the save load anywhere, anytime function in addition to a competent checkpoint system. All of this breaking the game up and making it easy for you to pick up where you left off very quickly from booting to playing makes for a game with few frustrations. Rarely did I ever lose progress. The only major frustration you'll find are ones at yourself for dying over and over. And be confident in the knowledge that you can overcome with just a little more practice or knowledge. And that's pretty much the ideal level of challenge I'm looking for in a game. There's also a deliberate move by the developers here to not use hit scanning enemies and have dodgeable readable projectiles. They definitely want their players to feel respected and like the games is fair and that their deaths are their own mistakes and not cheap shots, which is a surefire way to win broader appeal and a great way to buffer some of the least desirable aspects of the boomer shooter genre. It avoids frustrations for the player without removing the challenge. It's a recipe for success. There are secrets, which I didn't really try to find, but also appear to just be any power-up you find, and like many boomer shooters, power-ups are actually important for getting through bosses or difficult situations, at least for someone of my mediocre skill. So I found a fair few secrets, but also not really. I might have pressed E on one nondescript looking wall panel and got it to open in the whole game, so... Yeah, not much for actual secrets from me, but, you know, I might have found about half of the officially labelled ones in the game. There's a story here, and it even has to do with the Space Marine game from Relic in 2011. But I really was so gobsmacked by the beauty of the cutscenes, I didn't really follow what was going on. 
there's that chaos artifact from the old game and there's an Inquisitor and you fight this sorcerer and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to know. The game doesn't need more than that. It makes sense. Sorcerer got artifact. Sorcerer use artifact, summon demons. You fight demons, kill sorcerer, get artifact. The end. I mean, there might be nuances to it or something, but it doesn't matter. Remember, this game is about booting it up and killing stuff and looking, sounding, and feeling amazing while doing it. And it kicks goals in that department. The fact it has a cool story with links to another much-loved game about a very super special ultramarine barely matters at all, but it's a nice bonus. There's also plenty of weapons, and they are look, feel, and sound amazing. I found they were all useful at one time or another and had nuances to mastering them and times and places where it was appropriate to use them or be switching back and forth between them. But also, I didn't find it to be an overly complex or sophisticated system either. It was just enough. The spot-on, agreed-upon boomer shooter standard. There isn't a rocket launcher, and that's maybe the only bog-standard weapon trope they're missing out on, but the plasma gun kind of does big splash damage projectile thing, so it pretty much feels like one, even if it's a weird flavour of it. There's a shotgun, machine gun, big machine gun, pointy grenade launcher, laser gun, and a super mega laser shotgun, and a BFG. Um, it's pretty standard. There's no novelty freezers, flamers, shrinkers, goo guns, and stuff like that. There are three different kind of grenades. Two are good for regular combat situations, and the third is an official secret power-up level item that is good for bosses or really overwhelming situations. You have armor as well as HP, except the armor is called Contempt, because... 40k, but that's very typical for this genre. It also has trails of items leading you towards things in neat little lines with little satisfying sounds, and it is kind of nice. It's appropriate here, and it gives me the warm fuzzies and a kind of OCD satisfaction, but I'm glad stuff like that is in the past for video games, even if it's cool in nostalgia titles like this one. There are a wide variety of enemies, but not so many that you don't learn how they fit together like a big combat puzzle you have to navigate. A little bit like a more modern Doom title from recent years. There are a few boss creatures you encounter a few times. Another classic boomer shooter trope is reworking a limited palette of assets into a cohesive series of levels and a story, and this game pulls it off. It helps that you are fighting a sorcerer, so summoning the same kind of big demons or even re-summoning a big demon you already defeated makes sense. I wouldn't call the bosses the most memorable thing in video games. Ain't none of them ever going to appear in a best of bosses list anytime soon. But they are dangerous enough to be massively threatening and oftentimes you will use a power-up to just try and pour enough damage into them that you stand a chance before they annihilate you. They're also pretty good representations of the characters from 40k they're meant to be. It's straightforward and simple and to the point for their function, and they are also glorious in their sprite work and attacks, especially the great unclean one throwing green goop and nurglings at you. Sure, you aren't going to celebrate them more than overcoming them the first few times, but they provide the same frantic, manic fun energy and keep it all rolling, and that's enough for this title to work. The game isn't too focused on providing you a single, wowing sequence with set pieces and scripted action, as it is letting your chaotic self pinwheel around in an environment full of dangerous and threatening chess pieces with erratic behaviours. I've also got to give a special shout out to some of the visual effects and art direction. There are parts where they use glorious effects to really nail the feeling of madness of the warp, all while maintaining the internal aesthetic consistency across the whole production. Even though it obviously wasn't made in 1998, it never feels like it wasn't. Even when it's doing things graphically and it's being so gorgeous visually, it can't be from 1998. Really sophisticated and triumphant use of colour here, without deviating from their chosen style and delivery. 
This is a slick looking game and there should be some very proud artists out there. It is a little dark, but the brightness slider ought to be able to fix that for you. Overall, I can't call Bolt Gun a game of the year contender just because it's so short and ultimately unoriginal. It's a shameless throwback, but it is a very, very good game. A tight production that is an easy to play and exhilarating thrill from start to finish. A game that won't get game of the year, but will always be mentioned when it is brought up. A must play for everyone who likes FPS shooters and Warhammer 40k, and probably a lot of fun even for people that don't. By virtue of how good it is and how few flaws there are, I really don't have heaps more to say about it. Maybe in many years time it will be significant from a video game history point of view, and maybe then it will be worth writing about more. But as it stands as a fresh title in 2023, it's just heaps of fun, and if all games were this well realised and this well priced, we'd never be bored again. Have a good one.